everyone and welcome. Thank you for coming out tonight. I really appreciate you inviting me. And I really want to express my appreciation and thanks to the Chesterfield County Chamber of Commerce and the Chesterfield Business Council for sponsoring this evening. I think it's so important that we inform and educate the public about what's going on in Chesterfield County and Chesterfield County government. I have to tell you, it's been a pleasure to serve the last four years as the Dale District Supervisor, the very heart of Chesterfield. Everything that happens emanates from the heart, where the airports are located, where the seat of government is located, where the educational institutions are located. So I'm very pleased that I have served for the last four years on the Board of Supervisors. And let me share with you some of the outstanding, amazing results that I have this Board of Supervisors deliver. deliver. First and foremost, I want to say that I'm running on my record, not away from my record. Most politicians can't say that. Most elected officials cannot say that. I ran on my record because four years ago, Chesterfield County government was not working. 8% of the Board of Supervisors turned over. Four new supervisors out of five. And so, assessments were up, up, and away. The community was in, up in arms. Physical mismanagement was rampant. We were talking about $18,000 plane rides that were authorized by the Board of Supervisors. On my plate now, right, because it was so mismanaged, was a $135,000 RFP to revamp Chesterfield County government. I put it aside. Once I was on the Budget and Audit Committee, as a CPA, I said, I know we can do better. I know what we need to do. And so what I did was I rolled up my sleeve and went to work. But first of all, I put the interests of the citizens of the Dale District first. The interests of Chesterfield County above all interests, special interests, and any other interest groups. I looked at the situation, it was difficult. There were those who wanted to, uh, the first year, for example, I created what's known as the Cost Savings and Efficiency Team, saving Chesterfield County over $4 million in the first year, 2008. I still remember the number in the time to spend as it was presented. $4 million. And how do we do that? How do we cut spending? How do we create efficiencies in government? That Mr. Hall, can you go ahead and wrap up, please? Okay, thank you. We did it because I involved all our employees, our staff. I involved the community. We met around the county, and we made a difference. So I want to thank you so much for this opportunity to talk about, but I want to talk more about my record because there's so much more I can share. Time will not permit. Thank you. Jay, which version of the comprehensive plan would you support? The one proposed by the paid consultant group and the citizens steering committee or the planning commission's version please explain well first and foremost i'm going to look at both versions the purpose of the uh comp plan is to make sure we have smart and better growth in chesterfield county we've not had that for many years we have been operating off 26 area plans and so if i had to vote today i'll look at both plans take all the citizen input consult with my planning commissioner dr bill brown who's been leading that effort for us and make sure we have good decisions in the comp plan. Because the comp plan is going to save Chesterfield County $700 million when fully implemented, when implemented. So the comp plan certainly needs to be reviewed. I will review it, taking into account all citizen input, including my planning commissioner, and certainly uh, I'll make the best vote. Now, I might add also exercise of leadership. I appointed uh, my opponent to the comp plan. Uh, to work on that. And I did get a lot of input from him, I might say. So uh, I wouldn't do it again probably at this point because I haven't had input from him. Now, the other appointees had two other appointees who did a far better job on the comp plan. But that's why I have a good planning commission to work with me on that. So uh, today, I'll, I would say I have to take a very serious look at it as I do with all decisions. I evaluate all decisions very carefully and analyze it to make the best informed choice. Thank you. Mr. Baker. Thank you. Um, both issues have, have problems. The, the plan that I worked on that Mr. Holland referenced does have a very problematic portion for the Matoka district in particular with land use, 25 acre restriction. The biggest problem I have with the revised version is that they've combined economic development and revitalization together, which doesn't make sense to me. I understand the nature that economic development and revitalization can be perceived as the same thing, but they're not. And if you take revitalization and you fold it into economic development, it would suggest that it's somehow less important. And in the Dale district in particular, that is critically important, along with the, the redevelopment of older commercial corridors. Now, 
So we have, we have two flawed plans, but unlike my opponent, and I'll answer the question, I would support the plan that keeps revitalization separate from economic development. Currently, that's the plan that also has the 25-acre restriction on land use in what they call the countryside. But again, answering the question, I would support the first plan because revitalization is so critical to the Dale District. Thank you. Thank you. The next question will go first to you, Mr. McBurk. Beach Road from Route 10 to Nash Road needs improvements, but the cost has been estimated to be around $13.5 million. Some believe extending Nash Road across Swift Creek north to Route 10 would provide better traffic distribution at about half the cost. What is your opinion and how would you pay for it? Well, uh, interestingly enough, this goes back to proffers in some respects. Um, you know, the proffer system that, that Mr. Holland referenced, in many instances, doesn't actually go to pay for the infrastructure of the developments that ultimately get built because those revenues are collected far in advance before the first shovel is turned, and those dollars many times go into the general fund. So it's a bit of a misnomer to suggest that the proffers will always go for the infrastructure. Um, the bigger issue that you've raised, John, is two things. In terms of flow and public safety, in terms of making easier access from Route 10, and there's also the financial concern. Um, I would suggest that going forward, when we need to pay for transportation efforts such as this, that when we do, when we actually do the zoning process, and we actually start collecting proffers that are higher than the previous tax uh, code, that we, we make sure that those monies go in to be used for transportation. Right now, the reality is we have no money for transportation, and the VDOT has no money for transportation. So when, when you ask the question, you know, which should we do and how will we do it, right now there is no answer. But I believe if we can reform the proffer system and we can start redirecting some of those funds to the appropriate area, we at least will have an opportunity in the future to do that. Mr. Holland? Thank you, Mr. Easter. Certainly, I support the extension of Nash Road to 10. It will alleviate traffic. It will save uh, tremendous amounts of money for those who live in that area. In fact, I approved the expansion of or the improvement for Nash Road just three years ago when I became supervisor. Now, I'm improving roads throughout the Dale District. And, of course, road transportation is a responsibility of VDOT. Chesterfield County does not own its own roads. It does not, does not pay for those roads. That's been established since 1932 and we should not be responsible for it. That's a state responsibility. Now, what is true is that the proper money does go to fixed roads. I'm not sure why my opponent doesn't understand that because right now, we're improving a section of Newbridge Bridge Road with proper money that was used for that purpose. And so the money will be uh, coming forth. The unfortunate aspect, we've not had leadership from the General Assembly with regards to roads, nor the government for that matter. The money has dwindled in Chesterfield County. Each year it drops by millions for road improvement. You look around and the infrastructure needs improvement. And so what we have done is all the supervisors taking the leadership. We've taken the leadership, which most don't understand, and appropriate money through bond issues and other sources to help the state with our roads. They didn't have the money. So we had to take the leadership in doing that for regard to Nash Road and other roads in Chesterfield County. So I'll continue to work on that in addition to the money that will be coming to, to the county from the revenue sources by the state that we've worked with the General Assembly on. So we need road improvements, we need to enhance our infrastructure, but we have to work with the state to do so. That's the General Assembly. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, next question will go first to you, Mr. Holland. Do you support giving pay raises to county teacher, police, or fire personnel next year? If yes, how would you pay for it? Yes, I answered that question just last week and observed a great question. Yes, I do support. In fact, we did, in fact, give a raise to all eligible county employees in the current budget, uh, safety officers, fire, MES, I support that. We made it happen. Why did we make that happen? As I said earlier, it took leadership on the board of supervisors with a CPA at the hands to look at the books to make sure we had money in there. I would have supported a raise for teachers. And I did support a raise for teachers back in May when the school board asked me, did I support it? Yes, I did. I saw the money. I knew we had it. You see, you can't just decide to give a raise you have to have planning, you have to have savings, you have to have monies in the budget to make the raise happen, and ensure that revenues are balanced with spending. And so I will support it, and I did support a raise for teachers who did not receive a raise, only because we have a school board that did not understand its finances, and that's the sad reality. And I wish Mr. Wyman had consulted with me about that fact when they decided not to give the hard work teachers a raise. After two years, they gave a bonus, but no raise. 
And I saw that up until the last three years. But again, with the lack of leadership on the school board, and of course, they're not working closely with the supervisors who were able to give a raise to all county employees and especially police officers. And let me talk about police officers as well, and public safety personnel. What we did was we came in, it was dismal. We came in and put in a three-step program for our safety officers who were designated regionally. So I put that in place three years ago. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Victor. Um, well, clearly my opponent has to support a raise for folks because he voted himself a pay raise earlier this year, which was, in my opinion, an, an, an unconscionable thing. I can't understand how someone can vote to raise his pay when you have hundreds, if not thousands, of citizens that are struggling to keep the roof over their head and food on their table. Now, I answered the same question Mr. Holland did, and I was very clear. I said, we can't afford a raise for those folks at this point in time, unfortunately, because we still struggle with economic development in Chesterfield County. Currently, over 85% of the revenue that the county generates comes from the residential tax base, and that's simply too high. So I said in my statement that we should be able to afford raises down the road, but it's only going to happen with, when we have quality economic development and we create the jobs that are necessary so that the, the revenue can be produced without raising taxes. Because the harsh reality is you can't simply say we're going to give a raise to a certain segment of public service. You have to be consistent. And if you can't afford to give a raise across the board to all the folks that deserve it, then you have no alternative but to either raise taxes or to find another way to gen generate revenue. And I believe the best way to generate revenue is to attract more business here so that we can, we can grow the, the commercial tax base and give a little relief to our residential taxpayers. Thank you. The last one, let me thank all of you for being here tonight, right here in the house. Thank you, Mr. Deesa, for the outstanding job in Monterey. And I express my appreciation to all of you. And the question is, why should I be reelected? That's the question you have to ask on November 8th. Why should you be elected to Jim Holland, Dale District Supervisor? I'll give you three reasons. First and foremost, I've done the most outstanding job on the Board of Supervisors. I've led the board in making tough decisions. I've expressed vision on the board in making tough decisions. And transparency in government and being responsive to all the citizens in Chesterfield County. In fact, I received calls from all over the county because they can't reach their supervisors, or some supervisors, I should say, uh, in other districts, particularly in District South for me. Uh, I will continue to improve the county and the schools. I will continue to focus on managing our finances in a prudent and wise way. Let me just ask you this, this question. Who would you give your wallet to, a banker or a CPA? Trust the CPA. Let me ask you that. Uh, I will continue to focus wisely on financial literacy and assets. And also, the third and most important reason I'm the most experienced, I think, supervisor to go forward here to make a difference in this county and in this region. I said four years ago, we are on a journey toward excellence, and we have been on that journey. We will continue on that journey because I've been leading the helm with vision, with excellence, with making tough decisions, with not raising taxes, with challenging the school board to make wise decisions with your tax dollars. And so I ask for your vote on November 8th because I'm the best choice for those three reasons. Number one, I've done an outstanding job. Number two, I will continue to improve the county, economic development, and our schools. But we need leadership with regard to our schools. I will continue to be an experienced and focused supervisor on what needs to be done and make the tough decisions. You can be assured that I will be prepared to make the tough decisions when they need to be made. Not go along to get along, but to go along for the benefit of the citizens of the Dale District and for Chesterfield County in particular. I thank you.